Northern Ireland. Now, you may not be aware of this fact, but according to this newspaper, it's true, the aliens have landed. And they base this on some rather dubious eyewitness reports that they're getting uh, from people who are ringing in the newsroom and saying that the aliens have landed in my front garden or I had a cup of tea with a fellow with a green head last week, etc., etc. Uh, and ironically enough, when the editor asks for um, a corroborative evidence of this, for example, the first thing the journalist or the editor will say, well, this guy, do you have a photograph? Funny enough, they're not able to come up with a photograph of this famous alien who they've had a cup of tea with. But the, the newspaper justifies the running of these stories in the, in the comics to say that, you know, it's all a bit of fun. It's a bit of a laugh. People aren't supposed to take it seriously, and it certainly gets us away from all the heavy stuff, the credit crunch, the recession, the doom and gloom. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's harmless nonsense is the way they're portraying it. And you do, you do see a lot, of, a lot of that sort of stuff in the paper. And, you know, there is an argument for harmless nonsense in newspapers to a certain extent. And you, the problem I have is that a lot more of this nonsense is, is being printed. And a lot of it isn't really that harmless. And a lot of it is, you know, it's damaging the profession. I mean, one of the areas, for example, that you see a lot of nonsense portrayed is entertainment journalism. You know, it's news about the stars and the movies and the glitz and the glamour and the premieres and the highlights. And it's all good fun, or at least that's how it's portrayed. That, you know, we can marvel at the wonder of David Beckham's latest perfume or get a sneak peek into Rosanna and Davidson's wardrobe. I mean, I don't want to come here and be a spoil sport, but the point I would say is that much of this stuff, which is entertainment journalism that's supposed to pass for journalism is, first of all, it's pure nonsense, and secondly, a lot of it is, you know, it, 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 it can be rotten in the sense that it's based on dishonesty and deception. <coughs> now, without being too pulp-based here, I'll give you an example. Two months ago, I read an interview of the Irish Times with Louis Walsh, and I presume everybody knows who Louis Walsh is, you know, the promoter, X-Factor judge, Ben Galley, Pops and Galley, manager of Boys Down, you know. Great guy, you know, fantastic stuff, have a laugh, hooray. And what struck me about the interview with it was that Louis Walsh effectively admitted in that interview that he makes up lies and tells them the story. Now, I know it's probably not a great shocker for anyone who reads the stuff, but he calls it promotion. He says that a terrible thing happens when you don't promote nothing. So therefore, he doesn't get the word out about Ron and Keating or Keane from Westlife or whatever, but nothing happens in their careers to stall. And so, to deal with this potential catastrophe, what, what Louis said he does is he plants fictitious stories in the media. For example, he said that when Westlife were on tour in Australia, um, <clears throat> the newspapers were reporting near-death experiences for various band members. Keane was nearly savaged by a lion. Um, it, it, before he, after, after, after that near death experience, he almost plunged to his death in Belfast. And funny enough, Westlife playing a concert in Belfast at that time. Shane also nearly drowned in a freak wave in Miami. Um, Mark, I mean, again, you have to, I have to be looking at my notes because I don't know the names, I don't know these bad memories too well. Mark was threatened with blindness from camera balls popping. And Brian with deafness if he ever got on the plane again. And according to Louis Walsh, the best one ever, and these are his words, not mine, was the one about the band's plane crash landing in Australia. This went down well with the entertainment correspondence, but, you know, and Louis still laughs about it today. But there was one little problem that Louis forgot to tell the band members' parents at home who were already sick. Ho Ho Ho, it was a bit dodgy and we had a tricky time for a while, but hooray, everybody got over it. I don't really have a problem with Louis Walsh telling lies to journalists, you know. I mean, as he said, that's his job. His job is to put his bands in the newspapers by whatever means he can, tell whatever kind of lies he can about them, and spin whatever he can. That's his job, and fair enough to him. But I do have a problem with the journalists and the editors who write this stuff. And it may not seem important, but fundamentally it's nonsense, and secondly it's lies and deception. And newspapers and reporters who claim and crave authenticity, authenticity, credibility, and respectability, on the one hand, will on the other quite happily collude with promoters like Louis Walsh and print nonsense and lies. And it's not just entertainment journalism or so-called entertainment journalism that you can see this. You can also see this 
in so-called property journalism, and arguably property journalism.